And I gotta go ghost She see I got power Now she do the most And then that gangsters Get mad make a post Bet you I win With my back is the road Rockin' off white So she think I'm the boat I jumped in the water I knew I would float You think you the best And I'm killing the goat Niggas was broke All we had was hope Bro hit the plug All he had was dope I get the last life If he think it's a joke Say she got a friend Well I want them both Ain't going to jail Like me up in the booth Talk out your mouth Then you might lose a tooth Bro to your scorer All he know is shoot I'm, I'm dropping the top I think I lost my roof Now listen to him What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know what the deal is, man. Another day and another game. This one big time. We're going on the road to take on Washington State, a team that has given us some trouble over the years. I don't anticipate we'll get any of that this season, but they have beaten us before, and they're one of the few teams to do that. So this is always a red-letter game for us. Coming off a big-time win over Washington. Be sure to go check that one out. If you missed it, I'll tag it right here. Uh, like the video as we get going here. Subscribe to the channel as well. We're on the road to 450 subs, and you know I'm putting out content almost uh, double the content every single day here. Nobody is grinding like us over Christmas break and over the holidays here. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would like the videos and subscribe to the channel if, you've, if uh, you haven't already. We got some really fun things coming up uh, in, in the future as we wind down this season and look ahead to a new one on the YouTube channel. So we just looked at the sliders. As always, uh, those are in the description below, and you can find them online, Jared21. I try to keep uh, you know, keep myself challenged and make it as difficult as possible. Hasn't really been the case this year, but you know, we got a great team. Uh, so we have one Pac-12 player of the week, and it wasn't Eric Copeland, believe it or not. It was Matt Haynes' defensive tackle. I think he's a sophomore, maybe a junior, but he had a sack and a forced uh, a fumble recovery rather last week. Um, so good to see him getting that honor. I, think, I don't think we've had a defensive player get conference player of the week this season, and I really couldn't tell you the last time we had a defense uh, conference uh, Pac-12 Pac conference. I can't even talk. Uh, player of the week on the defensive side of the ball. So good for Haynes. Uh, looking at the conference standings here, we're a perfect 10-0. We just beat Washington, like I said, so they're not 8-2. 6-1 in the Pac-12. Oregon's hanging around. They're 6-4, 5-2. So here's the scenario. Washington State there as well, 5-5, five 4-3. Five, here's the scenario. Win today. We clinch the Pac-12 North. We go to the Pac-12 championship again. So that's all we got to do. We still control our own destiny. And on the other side, USC is hanging on to first place in the South. Uh, they win today. It looks like they'll be into the Pac-12 championship game with uh, the conference record they have and where they're at versus Arizona State. So it'll probably be Oregon State and USC for, what, like the seventh or eighth year in a row. Um, but, you know, they'll play us tough. They played us tough way back uh, early on in the year. I'll tag that game right here. So I'm looking forward to that matchup for sure. Here's a look at the top 25 polls. We moved up from number three to number two this past week. Still behind Notre Dame we've played them before and they're probably going to be up there until they lose I hope that we can get to number one before the playoff comes because obviously we'd rather play the fourth seed than the three seed but we'll see what happens we just got to keep winning uh, speaking of the playoff and, and bowl games and bowl projections let's take a look at those right now so we are projected to go to the national championship against Notre Dame one against two we will be doing the playoff just like we did last year so we'll have the semifinal and we'll have that championship game of course um, but in terms of other teams in the Pac-12 in bowl games you saw USC right there uh, you got Arizona State in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl against Duke. There's Washington projected to the Alamo Bowl against TCU. I like that matchup. A whole lot of purple in that matchup. Who else we got from the Pac-12? There's Oklahoma and Oregon in the Holiday Bowl. So respectable for the Ducks. We're hoping that you know we can give them one more loss for the season that before the season ends. Uh, Washington State, as of right now, projected to sneak into a bowl game as well with a five and five record. They need one more win. Hopefully, it doesn't come today. Uh, they're going to have to split their last two, though. Uh, looking at this matchup on paper, Lee Corso is picking us. Not surprised. We're better than this team on paper at everything. Washington State gave me so much trouble in previous years because they run. They, they used to run that air raid offense where they would just throw the ball all over the uh, you know God's green earth. They don't do that so much anymore, so we haven't really struggled with them since then. Uh, they've lost four of their last five games. Lone win coming against Cal, but they've picked up wins over Stanford. It's a pretty good teams. Uh, here's a look at our resume. 
We got three ranked wins as it stands right now, but if you count Tennessee in there, that was a ranked win at the time. Uh, so we will count that one. We will toss that in. We got a good resume, man. Uh, I really think we should be the top team in the nation, but whatever. Uh, looking at Washington State's impact players, decent quarterback, nothing spectacular. He's under 2,000 passing yards, which is bad at this point in the season. Uh, pretty solid running back, 6.5, 6.6 per carry, 75 per game. Pretty good wide receiver, actually. We've got to keep an eye on this little guy. Um, defensively, nothing much uh, really scares me. Uh, Eric Copeland, our leader in passing. No surprise there. McConnell, our leader, a leader in rushing. 12 yards away from the millennium mark. And Curtis Pennington is actually our leading receiver now. He passes James Parker. He's up to 688 on the season and seven touchdowns. And Casey Williamson, our new leader with nine sacks. So, really excited for this matchup. We always anticipate this one. Let's see what kind of test Washington State can provide for us. So no intro here this time, guys. I was actually having some issues with revamped. Uh, I, I was trying to play this game, and gotcha, it bitch. kept crashing over and over again. I finally got it to work uh, by not using my playbook or, I don't know, skipping the intro. Who knows? Uh, I'm just glad that I was able to get the game in, so let's do it. On defense, first Jude with a nice tackle. On first down, we get him to third down, and we sniff out the screen. So Washington State goes three and out on its first possession of the ball game, and now our offense will get an opportunity. So I mentioned the fact that, you know, my playbook – is not going to be in use for this game. So we use the Oregon State default playbook, which is what I used way back when we first started this dynasty. So a little bit of deja vu. Let's have some fun with it, though. Pretty basic, but, we'll, you know, we'll make the best of the situation. Uh, third and six, we hit Haas for eight to get the first down. So now third and five. Really, the playbook's pretty similar, just uh, really dumbed down. Not as many formations and personnel sets. Another big third down situation. Slants, hot route. We get Haas down at the five-yard line. Great throw by Copeland, putting it on his back shoulder there and he's able to move the chains get us uh get us in striking distance so now first and goal from the six qb power copeland gets the block from mcconnell and he'll walk in untouched a great drive from the offense to open it up Quick score update here. Oregon takes down Washington 42-35. So the Huskies just continue to struggle in November. And USC beat UCLA by 24. So they pretty much locked up the Pac-12 South with that win. Nope. Back to work on defense, though, and back to doing what we do best, shutting down the option. Aaron Bates right there to bring down the quarterback. They go option again. We're ready for it again. And this time it's Casey Williamson laying a lick on the QB. So third and 16, they're back way, way up. We're going man-to-man -man coverage, rushing four. They got two running backs in the game. Can we get off the field? He checks it down, and Brian Jude cleans up the mess. Another tackle, fourth and 11. They'll have to punt it away again, another three and out. So the offense back on the field, and we're starting things out. Not starting things out. We're trying to get this first down, rather, with a jet sweep, and we do. Pennington gets to the edge and gets six. You know, Pennington's really emerging, not only as a receiving threat, as, you, uh, as you'll as you see sometimes, he's also emerging as a rushing threat. We're starting to hit him with those sweeps and stuff, and it's really added a dimension to our offense. But quick strike to Haas, now underneath from McConnell on the screen, weaves through the defenders and picks up 13 yards, so we're back inside the 10. And this time we motion Pennington out, trying to find a mismatch here against zone coverage. Copeland looking, has Pennington, he takes a lick, but he holds on through the contact. And Curtis Pennington has a touchdown, we're up 14. So about as good of a start as you could possibly have for us here on both sides of the football. Washington State continues to shoot itself in the foot, coming out with a screen. Brian Jude eats those for breakfast. He gets the five-yard tackle for loss, and they're already behind schedule. Second and 15, another pass. No, oh, nice tip by Atkins. I had to play on the D-line there because I was trying to get to a safety or someone to cover, uh, but he cleaned it up for us. He dropped back into the... Um, you know, zone defense and got hands on that football to deflect it away. Now third and 15, quarterback, an ill-advised pass, and Brian Jude drops it. You're not going to get an easier opportunity to pick, Brian. Come on now. And with that, the punter is backed up into the back of his end zone. Wilson has a chance in the punt return game, and he does what he does best, which is get us some yards, get us some great starting field position. Oh, my God, but not a good start to this drive. McConnell just gets tossed. Oh, my Lord. Uh, a couple plays later, it turned into third down and three, and he gets blown up again in the gap. Impressive play by the linebacker. You know, they shut that play down the entire game, that quick base play. Uh, but fourth and two, we're, you know, we're staying aggressive. We're going for this. We get the mismatch on the drag. It's Brian Brewer making the catch. 
You know, if you remember that last game, if you watched the Washington game, he had some clutch catches for us down the stretch. He does that again there. But Copeland turns it over. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board, guys. And I didn't notice this until post-production. That's the safety. He was just lurking there. And a really impressive play. Can't really rag on Copeland too much. Um, really, you just got to tip your cap to that safety making that interception. He was in the right place at the right time. Um, and Copeland's coming off a three-interception game last time out. So, But the defense is doing its thing. It really doesn't matter. Back-to-back -back tackles for loss for Joel Anderson off the edge. And again, it's a third and long situation for the Cougars. You do not want to live in this territory if you're them. They call up a screen. We're going to shut it down, obviously. You may, well not run the play. you may as well just get into your punt formation because you're not going to convert a first down with us, uh, against us, rather, with a screen pass. So the offense has great starting field position. Again, we start the drive with a handoff to McConnell, trying to get that run game going. And look at this. We're going under center. I told y'all, you know, we're using that old Oregon State playbook. We got to use it to its full capacity. And we pick up seven with the ISO play, courtesy of McConnell. Now second and nine, going back to the shotgun, getting a little uh, innovative here. Pennington continues to stay hot. He beats the defensive back on the curl route. Copeland with a nice throw, sets us up inside the 10, and we finish it off. Brewer on the out route. One of our favorite plays, the Z spot. He finds the seam in the defense, and we tear it up. Another touchdown. So 21 nothing, little over four minutes left in the first half. Just continuing to dominate in this game. Second and inches, and Bill just gets babied in the home. And he made some great plays, but he also had those kind of things happen today too. But uh, then they call up an option, and obviously that's not going to work, man. That's like pretty much their entire playbook is option and screen. They've been running the crap out of him so far, and they just have not worked. They go with a sweep this time. We're ready for him, man. We got speed everywhere. We hold those edges. Now third and 13, another third and long. Another screen pass, and he gets sacked. No surprise. Matt Haynes picks up where he left off last week with the sack. They punt it back to us, and we'd have a little under three minutes to go in the half to maybe put some more points on the scoreboard. Uh, third and 10, deep in our own territory. We're passing for it. Copeland gets out of the pocket and finds the receiver, but he's short of the first down, so fourth and one. And we're not going to go away from what we have been all season, which is an aggressive team. We check out of the run because they're stacking up that box. We're going to try to pass for this first down. We're sending guys deep, and a seam comes open underneath. McConnell holds on to that tackle. We could have hit Haas for a touch. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but... Big uh, clutch conversion because if we don't get that, Washington State is sitting pretty deep into uh, positive territory with a chance to get on the scoreboard. Uh, but we continue our drive, and now it's time for the two-minute drill. A couple handoffs from McConnell. Second down and three. Got to pick up this first down to stop the clock momentarily, and we do. We're getting some great blocking and a great push up front. Running a bit low on time, though, so we got to go back through the air, and we do out route to Pennington. He makes the grab for 14 and gets out of bounds, so we're in business. At the 30-yard line, minute 20, Copeland, an ill-advised pass, throws it right to the defensive back. He read that thing like the Bible. He knew exactly where that throw was going. Should have hit Haas there. He would have been walking in for a touchdown easily. Uh, but Copeland makes the wrong decision. That's his second pick of the game, and it probably takes some points off the board. So now we're back to work on defense. Oh, are we, though? Joel Stewart takes it away. An interception for us. We come back and take it away from them one play later, and we are back in business offensively. So really, nothing much changed. Minute 15, we lost a couple of seconds, but same position on the field. And what do we do? We call up the exact same play that we just ran. And this time, we hit the right guy as Haas makes the grab, and he's inside the 10, up to about the 5. And we check out of a pass. We run with McConnell, and he finds his way to the end zone. Man, we had Carl Wilson and another receiver playing tight end there, which is just hilarious. Uh, but it works out. So 28 gotcha, nothing, bitch. under a minute to go. Another sack. Our defense is starting to tee off on these boys. You know, we're thinking about potentially getting another stop, getting the ball back, and scoring again. So we got those two timeouts still. Defense no, continues to play well. That should have been a pick. Jared Hemphill covered that beautifully, especially on the cutback route. Impressive stuff by him. So third and 18, and Jude gets the tackle again. Just a gain of one there. So we call timeout. There'd be 30 seconds left. And this uh, was a heart attack moment for me. 
Uh, this happens every so often. Carl Wilson just can't catch a football. So luckily Watkins hops on it though. Uh, we can get our offense on the field. Nice catch by Brewer. He breaks a tackle and he's inside the 40 yard line in the matter of seconds. 28 yards there. And we have no timeouts left because I spent it right there. So we go back to Brewer and he scoots out of bounds for a gain of 22. So seven seconds, still plenty of time. We could probably get two plays off here. Watch the left side. Watch the left side. Man to man across the board. There's the mismatch. It goes to Brewer, and he goes out of bounds. He knocked the pylon over. I'm not sure how that wasn't a touchdown, but we'll take it. Now, I mentioned before we didn't have our playbook, so I would have gone Wildcat here, but we go goal line instead, and McConnell saunters into the end zone to cap off a dominant first half, 35-0. After the first 16 minutes, I guess we'll call it, of play. Uh, spectacular stuff. Everything you would expect from the second best team in the nation. We limited Washington State to two total yards in that half. So the defense is playing really well. The offense is doing a good job. We just need Copeland to take care of that football better. In the second half, we'll be straight. So the game is giving us a gift to open up the second half. We have a setup play right from the get-go. They're stacking up the box. They're bringing a blitz. Oh, Haas is wide open. That is not a guy you want to leave uncovered. And he's deep into Washington State territory. Finally brought down at the 22. 52 yards for the tight end just like that. Now Copeland, can he continue the drive? No. He forces another pass into zone coverage. And that random-ass defensive back who has absolutely no drip picks him off. So what was the thing I just said literally 20 seconds ago? What was the key for the second half? Take care of the football. Didn't do it. Copeland throws his third pick, but Atkins is back to work, slamming a running back into the turf. Our, our defense, man. So many highlight reel plays already in this game. I would love a shutout. Let's see if we can get it. 35 nothing. third down and nine, underneath throw. Hemp Hill's right there, man. See, he gets, you know, he gets stiff arm once. He, get, he, made, he gets made look like a fool, but he'll come back and make some big-time plays as well. So his ceiling is so high. I'm excited to see what he can do going forward. Nice run by McConnell here. You know, after throwing three interceptions, you want to hammer that ground game, right? We do get another setup play here, though. Brewers wide open, big game. You know, me and the setup plays, we got trust issues, but today they were on point. Back to the air on uh, first down and 10, and we hit Brewer again, and he dove, but he couldn't get into the end zone. I was trying to get that dive off, but he went sideways instead of forwards. Uh, second and goal, handoff for Hall in the jet sweep, and he finds his way in there. I was a little nervous running that play because, you know, he's one of the slowest players on our team, uh, but he does have the ability, have enough speed to get around the edge and step into the end zone for a touchdown. So 42-0, third and 14, nope. and another deflection thrown into triple coverage. Nice job by Jesse Bailey on the back end. And that would do it for the starters in this game. No point in keeping him in. I mean, we're up 42-0. Uh, we're just looking to run clock at this point. That's Bruh. not going to help, though. Quinton Brown way off with the pass, I swear. I was throwing that to 85, A button, not RB. I, I knew he was covered. That pass somehow found its way into that... Um, into that defensive back's hands. I don't really know how. Uh, I guess Brown is colorblind, maybe? Who knows? Uh, Washington State does put seven on the board here with a stupid cutback route. Marquardt had no idea what he was doing. Maybe he was going to get a hot dog from the concession stands. Nobody really knows. Uh, not a good play there. Uh, screen pass here for Chris Hall just in garbage time, and he does a nice job to evade some defenders and get to the edge. Under seven and a half to go in the fourth. Uh, toss for Hall. Oh, see ya. Beats the safety, and there's nobody in the second level. Walk-in touchdown for Chris Hall. Man, that's what I recruited him for. Why you, why you keep that tool like that? Why you more like that? I hit the club 50 deep. How you get so high like Well, the future looks pretty bright in that running back uh, field, guys, with John McConnell going to the draft, obviously, this season. That was an impressive play. I knew he was capable of doing those things. It was just a matter of seeing it to believe it. And, well, you finally seen it. Uh, back to work here is Wilson just weaving, cutting, and tearing up this special teams unit. And now one last opportunity for the offense to put some points on the board. Nice read by Brown. He hits Dixon on the slot option play. One of my old favorites. I'm, I might add that one back to the playbook, honestly. Inside the red zone, underneath pass for Howard, and he dives in there. Nice to see the senior tight end tack on a touchdown in his last year of college football.
Obviously, that would just about wrap it up. Washington State was, uh, you know, still trying to put some points on the board late. Throw up the sideline, but Lundy's right there, and he swats it away. I'm telling y'all, this Lundy dude is going to be something, man. He's one of the best cover corners on this team, and he's not even a starter. But that would do it. 56-7, to easy W. Eric Copeland's player of the game. A little debatable there, I think. He did put up good stats, but those three interceptions, man, we can't be doing that, especially late in the season here. Oregon is going to take advantage of those, and USC as well in the future. Uh, so 21 nothing in the second quarter, and really, I mean 35 nothing in the first quarter. It's pretty hard to come back from a lead like that, right? So a good win, some things to work on, but you know we didn't have our playbook, and there was a lot of different factors working against us in this. So, like I said, solid day from Copeland, minus those three picks. Uh, really good game. Um, but great job through the air, racked up a whole lot of yards. Not much on the ground today, but just enough to be efficient. Brian Brewer, our leader with 10 catches, 140 yards and a touchdown. That has to be, those have to be career highs across the board. Edgar Haas, massive game as well, man. He's on a hot streak lately. Seven for 134. A lot of people getting involved. I mean, so many names on that list. Uh, passing game is really what did it for us today. Defensively, a spectacular performance again, just like last week. Four TFLs for Bates and a pair for a whole lot of other guys as well. Atkins, Anderson, Anderson Jude, and McCoy. Not many sacks, but, uh, you know, they didn't... Uh, they were in so many third and long situations. The quarterback was forcing throws, and they ran so many screens. There weren't really many opportunities. Joel Stewart had our lone interception today. Ton of deflections. Pretty much all of those are dropped interceptions. So I wish we would take advantage of those. But, you know, uh, when your de pass defense is one of the worst in the nation, you'll take whatever you can get from them. Uh, not much in the return game today. Patton didn't even have an opportunity. Watkins had, or Wilson rather, had a couple nice runbacks in the punt. Uh, here's a look at the total stats. Just about 600 yards of total offense, 462 coming through the air, uh, 7 for 9 in the red zone, and we dominated time of possession. Washington State was just 2 of 12 on third down. That was the difference in the game. They had so many third and long opportunities, they couldn't take advantage of those. Uh, so that would do it, 56 to 7. Now we're into week 14 against Oregon. You see all these XP awards we're getting for finals of the year and all that kind of stuff. I will go into that in more detail before the Oregon game next episode because the recruiting episodes are done, like I've said before. So that'll wrap up this episode. Another big time win. We lock up the Pac-12 North Division again. This is probably like the ninth or 10th year in a row. We've won the division and we'll probably face USC in the Pac-12 championship game. But before that, we got the 2026 rendition of the Civil War against a good Oregon team. They're seven and four, so we gotta take care of that game and take care of that business before we progress into the postseason. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back soon with the Civil War. Hope you're excited.